Hey, yo, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is Smart TCG, and today I'm going to be going over my post rotation Pokemon TCG tier list. Temporal forces and rotation is fast approaching, so it's going to be important to stay on top of the metagame. Along with this, one of the biggest tournaments of the year, the European International Championships, will be happening in April, which will be one of the very first major tournaments with this set legal. This set is now just legal in Japan, so we have been seeing some results trickling in from there, and that will be used also to influence a little bit of this tier list, along with also just my opinions in general. So with that being said, let's hop right into it. We're going to be going over first some of the brand new decks, because I know that's what many of you are looking uh, this is exactly where they end up and with that being said if you enjoy the content make sure to leave a like and subscribe it's the best way to support me as a creator anyways moving on um let's hop right into mill this is a deck that has been getting quite a bit of talk recently and i think it's actually quite strong great tusks first attack discards the top card of your opponent's deck however if you used a ancient supporter card on your turn you discard the top four cards which is quite a lot um, this card is really really good and has been performing relatively well in japan at the recording of this video there is a mill deck um, with the great tusk that has a very very strong record in contention for top eight out of i believe two or three thousand players so this deck is proving itself overseas and i definitely think that when the set becomes legal for us this deck is going to definitely be a force to be reckoned with now we have seen mill decks in the past over the past couple of years and a lot of them have kind of been memes and have not been you know consistently a real threat in the standard format really the last big mill deck that was you know widely respected was the shinchino mill deck that came out um when sword and shield released so this is the first one i believe since then um that really feels like a legitimate mill deck that has a chance versus many of the top decks in format currently going to put it in tier b because mill decks and just stall decks in general can oftentimes be exploited i think mill decks a little bit more than stall decks can be exploited so i think this deck is definitely going to perform but might end up struggling um later down the line if more and more people kind of figure out how to play against it but maybe um this deck gets more support in future sets as well and the deck you know maybe goes up to a or s but as of right now it's a pretty solid deck and i think definitely has potential moving on um let's go into lugia uh this is a deck now lugia has been around for quite some time however it is quite different now it's going to be colorless lugia with shinshino shinshino is a really really powerful card with the attack that deals 70 times 70 for each special energy attached to it meaning that if you use that primal turbo to be able to get tons of energy on it you can pretty much knock out anything one of lugia's problems has been the charizard matchup but with shinshino that matchup is largely fixed you have a shot versus it um, and you can pretty much be anything along with also gaining master ball as well uh, is a really really nice consistency card one of the few decks that actually doesn't necessarily need to play prime catcher one of lugia's biggest issues is getting archaeopsis into the discard pile so playing um, the master ball is definitely going to help you get set up this deck is for real um, lugia whenever it has uh, strong cards to go with it sees lots of play and sees lots of success the reason why it hasn't been seeing a whole lot of success over the past couple months is that it's just not necessarily incredibly strong as of right now and we still see it sometimes making it into day two of regional championships we saw lugia get top uh, i believe eight at the most recent melbourne regional championships as well and that's in a format where it really doesn't have a whole lot going for it now with cards like shinshino you also get the brand new i believe mist energy as well um, that prevents things like roaring moons um, frenzy gouging from being able to knock out you have a lot going for it whenever lugia has the cards to be successful i firmly believe that it's going to be successful just because it's such an inherently powerful deck lugia is back and i definitely expect it to be very very powerful especially at the beginning of the format Next up, we have uh, Baby Roaring Moon. I think Baby Roaring Moon has a lot of potential. I've been working on this deck actually quite a bit, been putting together um, some lists. I think this deck is quite good, um, dealing 70 plus 10 for every ancient Pokemon and also trainer or any type of ancient card that you have in the discard pile is 
actually pretty good. You know, we've seen um, cards like the Night March engine in the past and also Vespa Queen with B Revenge, Vespa Queen with B Revenge Red, 20 plus 10 for every Pokemon. And then Night March was 20 times 20 for every Pokemon with the Night March attack. So that didn't include things like trainer cards, which is, you know, really, really important. This thing um, includes trainer cards, which is really nice. So any ancient card that hits the discard pile, Roaring Moon is going to be getting powered up. You can also play the Roaring Moon EX as well. Pretty good early game attacker if your baby Roaring Moon is not able to take knockouts um, because, you know, sometimes it takes a, you know, a couple turns to reach that 300 threshold that, you know, some of these Pokemon um, you need to hit. For example, Lugia has 280. Uh, you need plenty in the discard pile for that and something like Charizard as well. You need quite a bit as well. So I think this deck has potential. The only thing that's going to hold it back is consistency. Um, but when the deck sets up, it definitely uh, can beat most things in the standard format. So overall i think this has a lot of potential i think this deck is legit for anyone that is you know kind of uncertain on it i think this deck is for real i think it's going to be really important to build the perfect list with this deck obviously for every single deck but i think that this deck um specifically um i think a lot of unrefined lists are going to pop up at the beginning and i think this is going to be one of those decks that potentially struggles at the very beginning but as people kind of you know start to refine the list and really make this deck which can be viewed as a little bit fragile um you know work once they find that perfect list i think this deck is going to see a lot of success kind of like gardevoir at the beginning um of you know gardevoir's lifespan um, back last year, a lot of people um, didn't see a ton of success with it um, at the very beginning, largely because lists were unrefined. But once lists became more refined, the deck truly became one of the big powerhouses in the standard format. Overall, I think Roaring Moon has a lot of potential. It's a fun deck. It's a one prize deck. It's good for Pokemon. And I'm definitely excited to see how it performs. Next up here, uh, we got the Raging Bolt decks. I don't have a whole lot of faith for these, unfortunately um i think the deck is just a little bit inconsistent um i think that it is kind of a glass cannon deck it takes a lot to get going um so i would say as of right now i'm gonna put in c i don't think it's entirely useless um but this does seem kind of like another reshram and zekron tag team um another potentially rayquaza v max which you know a deck that can do a ton of damage but just isn't able to necessarily put the pieces together um that's you know kind of honestly one of my biggest concerns with the deck so we're going to put it in C tier as of right now. It has potential, but, you know, consistency is king. And I think that um, one of the biggest issues with the deck is just, you know, not being able to, you know, achieve this same, um, you know, strategy every single game that you'd want to. Um, next up here, we got Torterra. I don't think Torterra is really a threat. I think there's just a lot of other decks that are, you know, more efficient. I hope Grass continues to get more powerful support. But as of right now, we're going to put Torterra in D. Maybe in the future it gets better as grass Pokemon hopefully get more grass support, but grass recently has been um, strained of good cards. So as of right now, we're going to put it in D. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, we got Snorlax. Uh, Snorlax is broken. Uh, Snorlax is very, very good. Uh, Snorlax gains plenty of brand new cards from the brand new set, um, which make both Snorlax and also Great Tusk viable. Um, Snorlax, uh, I think that Giratina is going to lose a little bit of popularity, which is one of Snorlax's hardest matchups. Decks like Charizard as well become potentially even more popular, which is a decent matchup. So I definitely think Snorlax uh, has a ton of potential. I think Snorlax is going to start at the beginning of the format, one of the big um you know top tier decks it doesn't really lose a whole lot it gains some crazy control cards and i think it has a lot of potential i think both the pidgeot and just the regular um you know stall version that we've seen um piloted by players like calvin connor um are definitely going to both see success so yeah stall's legit it gains more cards you know some people love that some people hate that um, but i think stall is for real and i think it's going to see success Next up here, um, let's go into Charizards. Uh, Charizard has been getting a lot of talk. I believe Charizard Barbaro, um, right off the gate, is probably going to be um, the most talked about deck. I think overall it is the strongest deck right off the bat at the beginning of the format, just because so many people kind of have that notion in their head that, oh, this is the best deck in format because everyone's talking about it on social media. We're all just going to play it, and we're going to see this deck hit 20 to 25% potentially of um you know the format however i think maybe over time as more people kind of become you know more used to this this deck drops into tier um a potentially um but i think it still just in general is an incredibly powerful card um gains you know a couple brand new cards from the brand new set um you know getting the a specs is really nice you know things like prime catcher um is pretty pretty good in the deck really really nice as a switch card also a gust effect um 
so yeah this this deck i think is just going to be right off the bat you know arguably the best deck it does decently into you know lugia it does decently into pretty much all these meta decks it's stall matchup is definitely scary but you can you know like definitely tech for it with more switch cards or stuff like that but it's still not great um so you know really depending on how i think also a big stall as well you know kind of determine how big charizard is but yeah charizard's broken it's been doing really really well in japan and i think it's definitely going to see um quite a bit of success right out the gate i do think it's a little bit better than pidgeot as well especially with prime catcher being able to so easily bring up things like pidgeot and just how the format is you know kind of shaping up i think that you know the evo variant is just a little bit better as of right now so charizard broken really really good deck definitely going to see a lot of success and i would not be surprised if it dominated um at the very beginning of the format okay next up here uh we have just the future box i'm just going to call this um the like the turbo iron hands iron crown deck so this is going to be the deck that you know tries to hit turn one iron hands as quickly as possible with multiple iron crowns on the field just consistently ampy very much ampy very much ampy very much over and over and over again i personally think this deck has a lot of potential um i think that this deck is going to see quite a bit of play i just think that the engine of this deck is so powerful um that all of my senses from playing um pokemon for so long kind of um give me a good sense as this deck is going to see play you know I, you sometimes just like look at you know like an engine and say wow this is you know this has a lot of potential you know things um like the brand new ace bet card that goes for future things you know you also have you know um, the baby maride on it uh you also have you know like iron crown you have electric generators as well to go into iron edge you just have a lot um this this deck has potential i think this deck is going to be real and i definitely think that this deck is going to see a lot of success turn one iron hands is absolutely ridiculous reboot bot as well as the ace spec i believe it's called being able to flood the board with energies to then write you ko something like a big charizard is absolutely phenomenal um, I think the deck has all the tools it needs to be successful, and I definitely um, think this deck will see success. Turn 1 Iron Hands is absolutely insane, and especially at the very beginning of formats when decks are a little bit more shaky in consistency just because the card pool goes down. You know, typically at the beginning of formats, you see um, a lot of decks be significantly more inconsistent just because of the fact that we have less cards available. You know, usually at the end of formats, you know, right before rotation, you have the largest amount of, you know, sets that you will have, um, which just means that there's just naturally, the you know, a larger amount of consistency cards and stuff like that that you can play. So, potentially this deck's going to take advantage of a lot of clunky decks early on turn one iron hands is amazing and i think that um future is definitely in good hands next up here uh we got roaring moon uh we're gonna do roaring moon i think roaring moon is a pretty strong deck i think with all these one prize decks it you know kind of runs into a few issues i think it's still quite good um you do lose galarian moltres which is very very unfortunate however you can just play dark V star um in this deck it doesn't entirely make up for it but it does help out um losing the moltres though is very very unfortunate um for sure i still think the deck is solid though and yeah i think i'll definitely see some play all right, moving on here, we got Banette. Uh, I think I'll just put Banette in C tier. Just doesn't do enough damage. If decks are able to set up, um, then it can definitely struggle. So we'll put Banette there. Just is not able to do enough damage, I think. Next up here, um, let's do Dialga. Uh, we're going to put Dialga at top of tier C. Just the biggest problem is consistency. That's another thing. You have to get set up a bunch of Matangs. You have to get set up also a Dialga as well. With so many decks in the format that can so easily attack early game. Also things like Radiant Charizard hit very well into cards like Dialga. Um, I think it's a fun deck. I think it has a lot of potential. You can pull off some crazy plays. Um, but I think until someone finds the perfect list for it, which I don't know if that will be available at the very beginning of the format, especially at EYC, um, I question um, whether or not this deck is actually going to see a whole lot of success. I think it inherently seems powerful. Um, you know, Star Kronos is a very, very powerful um, B star power. However, getting there can be kind of tricky. Next up, Iron Valiant. Uh, Iron Valiant doesn't really gain a whole lot. It still stays decent. I think it's probably just a tier C deck. Um, Gardevoir Raging Bolt, um, just Gardevoir in general. I, it's just, this is just inconsistency on inconsistency. I'm um, not having Shine Arcana is rough. It's just like being able to set up Raging Bolt can be just tough in general. Um, so we're going to put that at tier C. I actually do think now a lot of people have been writing this deck off. I don't think Gardevoir is dead. Now it's not a tier A deck. It's by no means, um, a, you know, very, very top of tier B, but I think the deck is a bottom of tier B deck. Yes, losing Arcana means that you can't as easily use things like Reversal Energy. However, um, I think that Gardevoir is too broken 
of a card to not see play. Refinement is still incredibly powerful. Things like Screamtail are still very, very powerful. You can use things like Mimikyu EX instead of cards like Zacian. Yes, it doesn't entirely replace it, but it is, um, you know, something else that you could play. So uh, I think Gardevoir EX is still a decent deck. I think not really necessarily with the Raging Bolt. I think Raging Bolt might have some potential, but I think that just the regular pure Psychic variant is definitely going to see some play. You also have Moonlit Hill now, which maybe can be more you know, emphasized a little bit more because things like Reversal aren't great anymore because of, you know, things like Shining Arcana leaving the format. So yeah, I think Gardevoir is still a decent deck. I think it has potential. Um, you just have to build it correctly. I think you have to build like a really turbo hyper aggressive build um, that really focuses on, you know, getting rare candy up, you know, being, you know, just dumping energies into the discard pile very, very consistently. And I think you actually have a real deck um, if you're able to, you know, accomplish that. Next up, we have Arctina. I think Arctina is quite good. Top of tier B, Judge Path, very, very good. At the beginning of formats, decks are more inconsistent, as I already said. Um, so I think this deck just, you know, kind of naturally fits in at that top of tier B. Definitely would not be surprised if this deck saw success. Next up here, uh, we got Lost on Toolbox. I think Lost on Toolbox is okay. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think that its stall matchup is very rough. I think that its Arceus matchup is rough. I think that its Lugia matchup is rough. And the Turbo Iron Hands is a major problem for this deck. So, um, you know, Lost Box always kind of has a shot versus things, but it really seems like the format is getting more and more hostile to it. Um, so I'm not going to necessarily put this deck up incredibly high. Going to start it off at top of tier Um C Lost Box still has pieces, but uh, the format continues to get more and more hostile to it, which I think is going to push it down. Next up, we got Lost on Giratina. Lost on Giratina, I think, is still a decent deck. Yes, you lose path, but um, so, you know, Star Requiem plus Hand Disruption, Lost Impact, Lost on Engine, still very, very good. You're a little bit better into these, you know, turbo like Maridon decks as well. Um, I think this deck is still solid. Um, you know, it does lose path. It's really the main thing that it loses. Um, and I don't think just losing path drops it from, you know, a top three or, you know, four deck in the format all the way down to a, you know, C or D tier deck. I, I think that's unreasonable to say. Um, so um, I think that this deck, you know, is a solid tier um, B deck for sure. Moving on, Chen Pao. Uh, Chen Pao is really, really good. Um, does good into things like Charizard. Does decent into things like Lugia. Does it really lose anything? I think that's one of the biggest things. It doesn't really lose any major cards. Um, so I think that just Chen Pao naturally um, is going to uh, definitely stay a very, very strong deck. It does lose one of its worst matchups in Mew, which is really, really important. Um, very nice for Chen Pao to lose that matchup as that was one of Chen Pao's biggest problems. Just getting Judge Path. Path in general um, was a big issue for Chen Pao. So really, really um you know good for chen pao that path is going to be leaving the format and also you know for things like lugia as well i actually forgot to mention that lugia doesn't have to worry about path as well which was one of lugia's um you know biggest issues so um was you know like dealing with path so both these decks don't have to worry about path definitely think they're going to be quite good maridon i think is just kind of i, I don't I wouldn't say it's worse future box but I think with all these other one prize decks that are becoming, you know, big that can one shot, you know, I think like Roaring Moon that have already been seeing success. I think that um, it's probably going to drop down. I don't know why it says Reggie Lucky here, but I'm um, just like Turbo Maradon in general. Um, you know, losing Flaffy is unfortunate. You know, that's one of the rough things. Losing Flaffy is unfortunate. So I think that's really, really going to hurt the deck. Um, it makes it a lot more high rolly, meaning that if you, you know, don't high roll into double energy off generators and your deck really just kind of falls apart because you don't have Flaffy to kind of make up for that, you know, towards the middle um, and late game when you don't get the double um, or like one like once you have to write you or stuff like that and like your energies you know kind of get depleted you can't really replenish them in any way so yeah um next up we got just charizard uh pidgeot i think charizard pidgeot is still good i think Barrel is significantly better though as of right now um so we're gonna put that at top of tier b and then goldango uh goldango is still a cool deck doesn't really lose a ton Goldango drawing cards is good. Palkia good. Just got second at a currently standard format regional and doesn't really lose a whole lot as of right now. Got second at Dortmund, but um, you know I think that Goldango will definitely see some play for sure. Anyways, that is going to do it for my tier list as of right now. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. Let me know if you think um, I should you know switch something up or I'm forgetting something. But anyways. 
Let me know what you think. First off, shout outs to Zappos TCG as well for making um, this tier list. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you so much. I'll make sure to put their link in the description as well um, for taking the time to make this template. But anyways, thanks so much for all the support as always. This is Smart TCG, and I'll speak with you again soon. Peace out.